So there seems to be a lot of confusion on how hockey works in Rel Cs after the release of Movie 2. So this video is just going to explain to you how hockey works and all of the hockey abilities that we currently know of, and just basically explain each one individually. So let's just get started. So firstly is how you obtain hockey. So I believe the Rel Brothers said that the main way to get these hockey cards would be through fighting bosses. So it seems like they are a rare drop from bosses, rarest being conquerors, most common being armament. Now as for how to use the hockey, uh, there are six card slots. As you can see on the screen right now, on the right there are six card slots and then on the top is the total amount of cards that you have. Also on the left you can see the stats in conqueror, armament and observation. Now, the stats in these points will improve the effectiveness of the card type. So, let's say you have all your points in Observation, none in Conquerors or Armament, and you try to use a bunch of Conqueror cards, that is not going to be very effective. But if you have all of your points in Observation, and use a bunch of Observation cards, that is going to be way stronger. As for how they will be stronger, we don't actually know yet. They haven't explained how the stat system for these cards works, but uh, the assumption is that they will have lower cooldowns or higher damage if they are damage moves and more dodges if it's a dodge move, that type of thing. So that's my assumption. That is not a fact. That is just me guessing. So now I'll move on to the individual abilities of each card. So we're going to start off with armament because, you know, it's best to start from worst then go to best. So this is Sir Lannister it simply increases your damage by 4%, which honestly is an awful ability compared to the other cards. Cards? I meant cards in the set. Like, I know it's an armament ability, but even within its own class, there's still things that are way better than it. Now, Bryo Tarth is an example of a good armament ability. This ability prevents you from being block breaked and instead pushes the attacker away. So, Basically, if you're getting block breaks from melee, you are just immune to getting combo extended off. And that is a really good ability to have. This next ability was actually showcased in the movie, uh, CG Fried. Um, third heavy attack creates damaging knockback shockwave. It's basically a black flash, and honestly, it's not too good. Like, it does a lot of damage, but with something like Bryotarth, like we just went over, Having something that does more damage is way less useful than having something that completely changes the way you play. Now the same sort of thing applies to Sir Galahad. Now it's just a replacement of an attack for a stronger hockey version of the attack. So of course my criticism is going to be the same, it's not too good, strong attack, better to have a utility boost. So for Sir Gawain, this allows you to hold your block for longer, as the posture durability is increased by 20%. This basically means while you're blocking, your block can take 20% more damage before actually breaking. Now this isn't as useful as some of the other abilities I've talked about, but it's probably better than their single move changes like the hockey punches, so it might be worth putting into your kit. So unlike the other armament hockey abilities, Sir Lancelot gives you three abilities rather than one. So, it increases down some AoE, allowing you to hit enemies easier or hit multiple enemies at once, increases posture damage, allowing you to break enemies' blocks faster, and also increases the victim lift. And this isn't very clear what this means, but I'm going to assume that it means you can lift up victims faster, so knocked players. And this is useful as you can pick up your allies and escape uh, many dangerous situations like team fights, or you can pick up enemies, take them away from their team, and execute them in silence so where their team can't help them. So I think that's a very good ability and worth putting in your kit. So that is all for armament hockey. Now it's time to move on to observation hockey, and we are starting with Tom Edison. So this changes your evasion to a grab counter with a punch. So if you evade something, instead of just regularly evading it and preventing you from taking damage, it just allows you to counter the opponent and possibly get a combo off. I'm not sure if it's a like combo ender like type of counter or an extendable counter, so we'll have to wait and see for that, but more than likely it's a combo extendable counter, because otherwise it would be kind of useless just to get one punch off. 
So depending on which of those it is, it might be worth putting in your kit. So Sigma Frood gives you 20% higher dodge frames. So for those who doesn't know what that means, it gives you 20% more iframes or immortality frames. So say if you dodged, you got immortality for one second. That immortality will now last for 1.2 seconds instead. So it's basically easier to dodge attacks and lets you survive longer in AoE attacks that are relentless. So for example, you know the Pika Beam that just spams you over and over. It's basically impossible to dodge. You might be able to spam dodging that for a little bit longer than you would if you didn't have this card. So I'd say it might be worth putting in your kit. So this next card is Darwin and this allows you to sense opponent's presence. So if you are using this, you can see opponents through walls and just know where they are. It's basically what Observation Hockey is in Blocks Roots, if you've ever played that game. Of course you have. This next card is one of my favorites. This is Einstein. It allows you to sense opponent's strength. So unlike the last card, which showed you where the opponent was, this card shows you information about the opponent, such as their HP, parry bar, evade bar, stamina bar, and what abilities they have equipped, like their devil fruits, weapons, and fighting styles. So this card could be used to catch your opponent off guard if you can notice that they are like running low on stamina, you can probably like rush at them, do a lot of damage. If you notice they have their parry bar, you can try and trick them by baiting an attack, see if they try to parry it, then you can punish them for failing the parry. So yeah, this is one of my favorite observation hockey cards. Okay, I'm not gonna lie here, I have no clue what the point of this card is, because it says an indicator appears before the final M1, attack at the end of the effect to utilize skill. Now, it doesn't actually say what the skill is, maybe it's a counter for the final M1 in the chain, but that's just my best guess, so I'm just gonna have to move on to the next card. So OP Heimer is also pretty straightforward, it just allows you to dodge 8 attacks. Um, in the movie, they did demonstrate this ability, and they got hit when they had 3 out of 8 dodges still left, so it seems like it only allows you to dodge light M ones and not heavy M ones so I'm gonna assume it only allows you to dodge a few attacks, and not every single one in the entire game, which is a good thing, otherwise this would be brain dead, like it is in Blocks Roots. So yeah, time to move on to Conqueror's Hockey. So this first Conqueror's Hockey ability is called Go D Zilla. So this stuns everyone, turns off modes, and puts everyone's key on global cooldowns. Now, that seems extremely broken to me. I'm pretty sure this is the Wi-Fi Hockey. So it's like a long distance stun, just knocks them out of mode, stuns them, and puts everyone's keys on global cooldowns, which is an insane ability to have. Definitely put this in your kit, like 100%. Next we have Napoleon, now this is pretty tame in terms of Conqueror's Hockey because it just allows you a speed burst when you equip a weapon. So I'm not sure how it works, if there's like a lag to it, so where you can't just spam equip weapons to keep getting a speed boost, that's probably the case, but it seems as though you just get faster after you equip a weapon, which doesn't seem too broken when you compare it to the Wi-Fi Hockey we just talked about. Okay, now this next ability seems pretty insane to me. It's infused Conqueror's Will into combat, so essentially having advanced Conqueror's Hockey, which is something everybody's gonna want, because that's what's insane right now in the show. So hopefully this is as insane as it is in the show, just increases your damage by a ton, allows you to hit low gears, blah blah blah, stuff like that. But Julius Caesar seems pretty awful to me. Uh, when I was watching the video, uh, he walks extremely slowly with it, so unless you activate it when you're surrounded by enemies, I don't see any use of this ability. Maybe you can like drop one of your teammates onto a group of people, they can activate it, just stun everyone, and then you can like come and piece them up, but compared to the other Conqueror's Hockeys, very, very useless. Now, this is probably one of my favorite Conqueror's cards, or cards in general in the entire game. So this card makes it so once you get knocked, you release a Conqueror's Hockey Burst that disables attackers for 10 seconds. So if you are knocked, instead of having 20 seconds to kill you, they now only have 10 because you spent the first 10 seconds releasing Conqueror's Aura. And that is every single hockey ability in Rel Seas that we have seen so far. There may be more, but not that we know of. So. If this video is helpful, let me know, subscribe, like, and also let me know if you want me to make a tier list of all the best, 
well not even a tier list, just like a ranking video going from worst to best of all the hockey cards just to inform you guys on what you should be using when the game releases. So other than that, join the Discord and I'll see you guys in the next video.